Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we will learn how to make a queue which is based on an array that is the storage is an array and the semantics is of a queue. So this is my header file and uh, at the top there is header card and this and this is and this. I have included three uh, header files stdr.h, stdbool.h and stdlib.h stdio provides me the basic input output stdbool the boolean variables and stdlib provides the exit and other utility functions I have a constant max is equal to 4 which is the size of the array head and tail are initialized with minus 1 there are two functions nq and dq nq takes uh, the array and uh, the length uh, sorry the element and dq takes the array and menu is for printing the menu so if you have followed my videos earlier on stack it's quite similar to that so i have declared the main array here and the side main and i have dq element here for purpose of printing element for the sake of applying to the array and option is initialized with minus one so the menu is in q or dq and then I scan for one or two and if it is one then I NQ and if it is two I DQ the DQ element is uh, taken over here if you notice it's a type NQ is of type void and DQ is of type int now uh, we let's look at NQ and DQ function so NQ takes the array and element now if head is 0 and tail is max minus 1 or head is equal to tail plus 1 then q is full what does that even mean um, we'll see okay now if tail is minus 1 remember that we have initialized both with the minus 1 right over here so when it is called for the first time, it will set both to zero. Now, if it is not minus one, that is zero. So in the first run, it will be set to zero. And then it will fall here. And at the tail, it will be added. And the second in queue, now remember that tail has become uh, zero right now in the second run it won't go here yet it won't go here it won't go here it will go here the tail will become one and position one element will be inserted and the third run tail will become two and will be inserted in the fourth run now tail is three the q has become full because zero to three is occupied and our array size is so it can accommodate only four elements now one thing which I could have done is I could have initialized both to position zero but there are reasons why I have not done that so because uh, if I initialize them to zero the state machine will go wrong of the queue let's look at the queue now assume that our array is full okay so the test of a full in CQ is head is minus one so that that's why those are made back to minus one now when dq assume that the array is full zero one two three then element is q head that is dq from the head side and if head it head becomes equal to tail then we set both to one and if head is max minus one then head becomes zero else head plus plus head increases and we return the element you, you just don't delete in a dq in a linked list implementation it will actually delete the element but in an array you can't do that all right okay so now we run this all right now there is a problem over here okay the problem is you can't 
so infinitely back and forth in this because head is not coming back. There is no way you are decreasing head. Okay. In an array, you have to decrease head on DQ. But since the operations are such that the semantics, you have to have a circular Q in an array. Then you can do infinitely. If you don't have a circular Q, you have a linear Q. It's a linear Q implementation. If you have a linear Q, you can do this only once. I mean, DQ operations will happen only four times. After that, it's going to go wrong because storage will not work. Now, the only chance of uh, it working is down over here. Now, see what happens. Now, if head becomes 3, then head is reset back to 0. Okay? And if head is equal equal to tail, tail then it is set to minus 1. So, this kind of becomes uh, not really. This is fine. I, I believe this is fine. <laughs> so, we will run this code and see. Okay? I am not feeling confident about this code. Okay, so the best way to, because you need pen and paper to do this math part. Um, let, let, let's run this program. I'm not feeling confident anymore about the code I have written. So we run this. Q dot three dot slash a dot out. Only MQ elements. Only MQ one and two and three and four. And we can't MQ more than four at any point of time. So at this moment, there are four elements now with DQ. So DQ development is one with DQ again, two, three, four. Now we can't DQ again. So Q is empty. Now we MQ again, and we say MQ five. We MQ again, we say MQ six. And we DQ, so DQ is five, and DQ, DQ is six. So it looks like my code is working. Alright, uh, I was just being funny. Okay, so I have definitely tested this code, and but there might be a bug. But uh, the implementation looks solid to me now that we have run it. So that's about it for implementing a linear queue. You have to be very careful about when to set and when not to reset the head and all. In a linked list implementation, these problems are not there, but in an array based implementation, it's kind of tricky. So, if you have uh, enjoyed this video, then please hit like button and uh, uh, if you would like to more videos on a specific topic, you can mention it in comments and I will try to make it on data structure algorithms, that is, the topic should be from data structure algorithms and we will see. So, in, in my next video, I will uh, do a linked list based implementation of a queue, which will be much simpler than this. I find the English based implementation simpler than array based implementation. And uh, in, in real life also, you rarely have a, a array based implementation because array are fixed on size and they are located on stack. All right. So, uh, I think uh, I'll stop here and if you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe. That helps me get the uh, morale up. <laughs> Alright. Take care. Happy programming. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.